Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. Now what I have for you today is a video on one of, if not the most underrated survival item out there that we can add to our survival kit for less than $5. This item can do everything for us in a survival situation. And today in this video, I'm gonna prove that to you by taking this item and using it for almost every single survival priority out in the wild. Stand by. All right, guys, welcome back. You get in the face today. Now, we put up a poll on YouTube to see which of the five items listed below was the most underrated survival item. And you guys, in a vast majority of 35%, voted for the bike inner tube. You're not wrong. That bike inner tube can do a lot of things for us, like we can take the rubber and use it as a fire starter. And we can also cut that rubber inner tube down into small sections or ranger bands or retainer bands and use it to retain our gear, just like our pocket survival tin. But I would argue there was one item in that list came in second to last place. It is very underrated. It's gonna give us the ability to signal for rescue, provide medical aid, increase our firecraft skills out in the field. It's gonna give us the ability to craft weapons or manufacture weapons out in the field for defense as well as going after game. It's gonna give us the ability to actually get food. It's gonna provide us the ability to actually do some land navigation and it can also get us some water. I'm kind of surprised only 6% of you voted for the bungee cord. We may have to make a video on the bungee cord later on. Not only can that item do all of those survival skills, but we can also use it for bushcraft to create tools as well as containers to travel with. And that item that can do all of those things for us in survival as well as bushcraft that is under $5 that we can purchase and place in our kit and use for survival is a double XL, 100% cotton t-shirt. It's just an orange t-shirt. Now I know what you're saying. It's just an orange t-shirt. There are a lot of obvious uses with this orange t-shirt medical aid, signaling, maybe a little bit of firecraft, we can use it to strain water, got it. There are a lot of improvised uses for this orange t-shirt as well, and we're gonna demonstrate those out in the field. And I'm not talking about just silly little things like cooling off your neck or turning this shirt into a pillow, although it does kind of make a good pillow, but real survival uses that will help us in a survival situation. Let's get some of the obvious survival skills out of the way first. Now, probably the most obvious use for survival with this t-shirt is very simple. Put it on and you become a signal. I'm the signal now. Obviously, we put this shirt on and we are a walking, talking signal that can move easily through the forest and be seen by search and rescue, especially from the air. The next obvious use for our bright orange shirt like this for signaling is to take it, harvest a pole from the landscape, and turn this into a flag for signaling rescue. The survival flag is a super easy thing for us to construct, especially with our survival t-shirt. We take out our saw or our knife or our axe, some cutting tool, harvest that pole off the landscape, clean it up. That way we just have a singular pole and all the branches and dead twigs are knocked off. We slide that through our shirt after we lay that shirt out on the ground. And then we take out that hank of 550 cord from our pocket or our shoelaces and secure the top of the flag and then the bottom of the flag or both sleeves. And then we wrap the excess cordage around the pole and our flag is complete. Now we could take this flag, place it in the ground on an elevated position in open terrain as a passive signal to alert search and rescue. That way it's signaling for us. Or we could simply take this flag and wave it back and forth in the air to alert search and rescue as an active signal. We can also use this cotton t-shirt as a medical aid device. We can cut it up and use it for a wide variety of injury treatment or medical aid out in the field, especially in remote or wilderness first aid scenarios out in a survival situation. Obviously, in a survival situation, just grab the shirt, tie the best tourniquet possible, and stop the bleeding. But if we have material prepared already from our shirt, just tie the tourniquet, use a stick as a windlass, tighten it down until the bleeding stops, and then use another strip of that shirt to secure it in place. We can also use strips of that shirt as a sling to immobilize a fractured limb and prevent further injury. 
to use this shirt as a bandage, we can cut off a strip and roll that strip up to act as gauze or makeshift gauze, and then take another strip, wrap it around that bandage and that gauze that we placed over the injury or over the laceration. And the good thing about this shirt is that it stretches and will act as a compression dressing. And then with medical aid, we can use that shirt along with Sam splints to create a splint to immobilize a fracture. Now, signaling and medical aid are the most obvious skills and uses for this bright orange t-shirt, but we can get a little froggy with our bushcraft skills and turn this shirt into a backpack to carry our survival kit if we don't want to turn our wool blanket into that backpack or construct a frame from the area. We can take this shirt and put our gear inside using a little bit of cordage and knots to construct that backpack and then continue to actively and passively signal as we walk through the area by having this bright orange backpack or bush bag on our back signaling search and rescue for us while we move out. The bushcraft bag or the man satchel as I like to call it is a great improvisational tool to carry all of our items with us over distance and freeing up our hands especially if we don't want to go through the extra effort of creating a ladder style pack frame or a Roycroft pack frame out in the field with just our basic kit. But what we can do to form this bag is simply S-fold the hem of our shirt down by the waistline and then take out that 550 cord hank from our pocket or the cordage from our kit, tie an arbor knot or what is a jam knot, and then secure the bottom portion of that shirt, tying it tight, and then laying that shirt out flat, we just open up the collar and that's where we pack all of our survival equipment, our blanket, our knife, our cordage, ferro rod, our bottle and nesting cup. And then we just take the sleeves, put them together, S fold those, tie them off, collect the collar, tie the collar off, secure it all in place. And then now we're ready to throw it over our shoulder and get moving. With our bush bag, now we've got the ability to carry our survival equipment with us, move through terrain, freeing up our hands for whatever tasks we may need, climbing over obstacles and moving through that terrain, pushing brush aside. But we're also actively and passively signaling at the same time, providing that signal is out with our bush bag made out of that orange shirt, and that we're moving, providing color, contrast, and finally that movement is part of our signaling strategy for survival. Good to go. a more bougie activity and that is creating a simple bush chair. With our survival saw or a knife we can just harvest a tripod section from the landscape and then we take out that hank of paracord from our pocket and simply tie another arbor knot or a jam knot around the top portion of what will be our tripod. We can stand that tripod up now, give it the old body test by doing a controlled hang from that tripod to make sure it can take our weight. And then we just get out our shirt, we S-fold the hem waistline again, secure that with our nylon webbing from our mountaineering kit. We tie it off with a secure knot, wrap down a couple times back the direction we just came, and then finish off with a square knot underneath all of the wraps that we had just made. We can then hang this seat onto our tripod, make sure we're good to go and that our seat is complete and we've got another shelter item. Just take our orange shirt and figure out where we want it and then we're just going to tie it off, hang it up and get our cross section to make our chair. Individual survival experience may differ. Now, 
Now this is more of a bushcraft rather than a survival option using our t-shirt, but just another improvisational method of using these t-shirts or in my case, two t-shirts, double them up because I'm kind of a bigger guy, but we can make a bushcraft chair out in the field, get a load off right around base camp after we get back from our trek or our land navigation or hunting, whatever we're doing but one of the many uses that we can use these t-shirts for. So put that in your toolkit and take it out to the field with you next time. Now there are many uses for these orange survival t-shirts, much like the bushcraft bench that we got behind us. Another use for this t-shirt is to take it because it is a piece of large cloth and recreate or draw a map of the surrounding area in a more long-term survival situation to be reasonably able to land navigate, orienteer, find resources, and get an approximate scale of distance to be able to travel and expand our reach as a survivor in the area. Now this style of map, or recreating it just on a piece of cloth, is seer style stuff from survival training. But we can make a map of our general area, especially the resources and large terrain features like a pond, hilltops, east and west. We have our north seeking air at the top of our map. And then we have different trails that run through here, as well as other land features like our base camp, a signaling area, this could be an open area on a hilltop where we can signal, as well as a swamp out to the west. We even have railroad tracks, and on this map, similar to a lot of military maps and the civilian maps, we're going to have a scale down here giving us approximate distance of our map itself, a legend with all the abbreviations and features that we use, as well as potential resources in the area that we can find, such as cattail, even fish in water areas, trails, and then different trees that we could find in the area that may provide survival needs or provide for most basic needs in a survival situation. So being able to recreate a map like this is incredibly important. So we took a shirt, did a couple of bushcraft items with it, signaling medical aid, and we even made a map out of this to land navigate around the area. That's cool, bro, but we can take this shirt and actually make weapons from it. A simple weapon to create that we can do very, very quickly and doesn't cost us a whole lot of effort. It's just a simple sling bob like this or a maul or a mace. We just grab our shirt, lay it out, throw heavy objects in the center of that shirt, grab all four corners, tie it up, and then we can start swinging at a moment's notice. But we can take this cloth and actually get another weapon from it by using the hem and a piece of plastic. With this method of cutting through plastic using just a cotton shirt, we're gonna break this hem quite a few times. In fact, I think I broke it about three or four times just trying to saw through this piece of plastic. Once we get this piece of plastic cut though, we're going to have it in an outline or a shape of a shank or a knife. That way it'll make it easier for us to sharpen along these rocks and then we can take that cordage or the hem of our shirt and wrap it around the handle portion of what was our shank and then once we're sharpened we have an effective weapon to fight with. So as you can see, we can take the shirt, we can make simple weapons like a sling bob or maul, and then even a shank. We can take that piece of plastic, tie it to the end of a spear and actually use it to go after game for a hunting tool. But we can take this shirt now and with the rest of it, we can actually use it for other survival purposes. The next purpose being water straining. Don't mind me, I've just got these scissors. I'm gonna cut this section out to make it a clean cut and illustrate how we're going to cannibalize this shirt overall. Now, we're just gonna take that section of t-shirt that was around the chest stomach area, and we're gonna use this to create a simple ice melt. There is ice down in the water sources. It's not completely frozen over yet, but this is a good demonstration for a skill that is very important, especially in winter environments, where we may not be able to break through that ice, or we have to collect snow from around the area melt that snow, collect it in our container, and that is how we get water for a survival situation. This method of melting ice or snow, especially in a winter environment or survival situation, is a good lesson to learn. We can hold this entire apparatus up with just a few pieces of paracord. We take the paracord, all arbor knots, grab a small rock off the ground, and then use that as an anchor point with our shirt to hold up what will be our ice melt or snow melt. And then once it's all complete, we're ready to go off and collect our ice.
right, so great learning opportunity right here. This is a deer carcass. You can see all the bones, legs, spine. I don't know where the head is. I don't see it, which makes me think it's either out there or further up the bank. But this is a good learning opportunity because if this was in the water or if there was drainage coming down here pushing that deceased animal's remains into the water, this could be a questionable water source. This makes me question this water source. So we're going to harvest the ice, but we're not going to drink it because this could be contaminated with dead animal. But there's a lot of ice on here, so we'll see if we can't get a few chunks and take it back to camp. Now, you may be asking yourself, self, why isn't Andrew using that other portion of t-shirt to collect that ice and carry it back to camp rather than using his bare hands? Well, number one, we're a short distance, so I'm just going to grab it, carry it back here, and put it in the strainer. But I have other uses for this t-shirt, and I don't want this thing getting wet for those uses as we move toward other survival priorities and demonstrations with our $5 orange t-shirt. So that is the reason. But this is a great demonstration for cold weather or winter survival skills, creating a snow or ice melt to collect that water, boil it to purify it, and make it safe to drink. While our ice is melting, we have the rest of our shirt now. And we're going to go in to firecraft. Now, what we want to do is we're going to just take a sleeve from our shirt. doesn't matter which side. Just going to cut off that sleeve and we're going to take this 100% piece of cotton from our shirt and use it for firecraft by turning this into char for future survival fires. To get our fire going we're going to use a piece of char cloth that we already had prepared as part of our kit along with flint and steel. We've got cottonwood bark we're going to form that into a bird's nest and then apply a generous portion of our char material to the center of that bird's nest because we're getting ready to make more char material so we can use a little bit more this time. Flint and steel works every time. We just hit the right spot, ignite that char, and then we're just going to blow it into flame and begin building up our fire. To check it to make sure it's nice and cool. It is cool to the touch. So now we can open it and there's our char material good to go. Now all we need to do is test it. Now that we've got our char material for future survival fires, the remainder of that t-shirt is just waiting to be used. So speaking of fire, we can use the remainder of that t-shirt to create another firecraft device, not only to start a fire, but carry fire over terrain, as well as see in the dark and signal for rescue. And I'm talking about a survival torch. We've got the remainder of our shirt, just that shoulder portion, and then the collar itself cut off the other sleeve we're going to use that for our next task after this one but with this piece of material and accelerant or some sort of fuel we can turn this along with a green stick into a survival torch 
The survival torch is a great improvisational method on using our survival shirt, especially if we don't have a headlamp or flashlight or any tool to be able to see in the dark. This will give us that light source. It's also a good way to carry fire to our next campsite and then be able to start fire immediately on the next campsite. Or if we're going to start a survival signal fire, we have that material already lit and we just apply the flame. But this torch is also a psychological effect, giving us the ability to kind of stay calm in a situation and provide for our own defense. But we pour that flammable liquid on our material, light it, and then we have our torch. We're using alcohol stove fuel for this torch. So this gets burned a lot cleaner than other flammable material out there like gasoline or different accelerants. But definitely easier to see at nighttime. Well, we've got a survival torch, long lasting, that we can use to see through the dark or signal for rescue. This is all that is left of our survival t-shirt. We used everything else for medical aid, for signaling. We cannibalized it for torch, for firecraft, to use as a water filter. And now what we're going to do with this last little bit, or the leftover sleeve, I think this was the left sleeve, is we're going to take this, cut it into small strips, and use it out here in the water to go after some fish. It's cold. Obviously, we're getting into winter months, December. There's a little bit of ice on the water. Most of it is good to go for us to attempt fishing. Hopefully, what this means with colder temperatures is that the fish are looking for anything and everything and will respond to color, especially for our lure to go after that potential food source. And we can hook it and bring it in and get a survival meal. Well, we're trying out here in the water and nothing is biting. In other survival courses I've done, we've used bright paracord and other bright objects, plastic, to actually lure fish and catch fish. So it does work. Unfortunately, today it is just not working for us. But you're going to have to settle for some cool drone footage. Like that UAV footage, that drone up in the sky, taking a look around, adding a new element, that three-dimensional element to our survival videos, and it's going to be a mainstay in the videos from now on. But I hope you like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.